doing some wiring. I guess they want electric. I'm trying to put the big screen TV in. Check out your new digs. It's like we rearranged the furniture in your house. Here comes the other one. About to be out done. Wrong side. I feel like what's going on here? I think this is going to be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah.
There you are. So as you can see, we got quite a bit done on the farrowing barn in anticipation of our two gilts farrowing. Um, we did not close in the eave up here because I have a lot of storage and I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to access that storage. Um, I've closed in the other side. If I close in both sides, then of course I can't get anything out. So um, i trying to figure out to do a door with a ladder, do something inside. We'll figure it out, but not a huge issue. Let me show you, kind of summarize what we put together. So of course the obvious first steps we took was um, rearranging the layout in here. If those of you who watched the channel for a while, you know that this back section was its own corral with a gate. And we moved that and added new boards so we can have two long corrals here. So these would be about seven and a half, almost eight feet by 20. So long and they each have their own door access. This front area, we did not enclose it with siding. Uh, the plan is at some point to put a sliding door that will slide that way. Um, I didn't want to completely close this off and make it just a one function building. If there's a time that I need to bring my tractor and other piece of equipment up, I could take out these boards pretty easily, slide a door open, and of course drive a piece of equipment in, removing those uh, just six boards. So we wanted to have that as an option. The gate that we had on the inside, we had here, we moved out here to make up our corral area. And that gate swings out toward me. Ideally, I'd like to like for it to have swung in or even been here and swung out, but uh, I wasn't going to go through the issues of setting a new post, concrete, and all that type of stuff, because this is not going to be permanent. Finished all the siding. We kind of rounded it out. I was trying to go all pine, but I ended up introducing a little bit of poplar there. Again, uh, not a huge issue. So for the corral area, making this temporary spot, I've got three, here's my third one, of my uh, movable panels built, and then the rest I did with cattle panel. And I'll explain that here in a second. But you can see we've got the water trough there in the back. We've got uh, plenty of shade. The only thing I don't have is a wallow, which I know the pigs are missing because they really like to be in the mud. But um, since it's end of September, we've really got some cool days, so it's not, it's not a health issue. It's more of just a comfort issue for them. So I'm really liking these panels. You can see, of course, they're four feet high, so not an issue for a pig to jump over. We've got a, a small throat here. It's about um, six inches between the boards, so a hog's not going to squeeze through that, the big hogs. Uh, it's piglet wood, obviously. But locking these together just with screws, there's just a couple screws against the siding of the, the barn, and then just some screws running in here. There's a T-post right here, but it's not even it's not even touching anything. I drove it in and realized, after the fact, I don't need it. It's amazing how well this locked together and doesn't wiggle. <clears throat> I put my ladder up here because no matter where I put it, the pigs end up either chewing on it or throwing it over the hill, so I have to set it up here high so I can get it. Two things I would do differently after milling these, for some reason uh, in my head, I was just thinking of, of something formidable. I milled true dimensional. So this is a true two by six. This is tr three two by sixes, true dimension two by six, and then two true two by fours. And so it makes it extremely, extremely heavy. And especially since some of this wood's only been drying out for about a month. So uh, it made it very, very stout. So it's one of those things where it's not easy for me to move. In fact, I had to build them in place and lift them. I, I could move them, I can drag them around, but I'm not going to lift them up and, and uh, manipulate them very easily. I do have the lumber milled to finish to actually have these temporary panels moved all the way around. Four more panels I need, I calculated seven. But uh, the issue I discovered quickly was that the amount of elevation drop that I have to this point is pretty substantial. So the angle that would have to be on those boards, either it would have it high here and have to shove something underneath it, or have it at such a downward slope that I'd have to fill in a gap somewhere. And I thought, well, let's use, I've got two cattle panels anyway, let's use those. They can flex, so right here is where two of them come together at the low spot, so they're actually kind of scissored down to fill in that gap. And drove in some T-posts real deep, got them screwed to each of my, my uh, panels that are locked in good, and I was even throwing myself, throwing myself against this the other day. And, you know, if the, uh, if the hogs really wanted to get out, if they were super stressed and wanted to bust through this, they could bust through almost any of this. 
but uh, they've been pretty chill. I'm bringing them food, bringing them water, they've got shelter. There's really no reason for them to want to bust out just yet. The whole purpose for building these panels like this, like I said uh, in a future in a previous video, was inspiration from Jordan Green and, and other farmers have used it. But these are to be temporary and movable. So there's nothing actually securing this panel to the ground. There's just some T-posts driven in and that's what's anchoring it down. Uh, so there's no permanent post set. So when the time comes after farrowing happens and it's time to let them roam around free, then all this comes back down. And once these dry out and they're easy to manipulate, the plan is to make large hangers on the side of the barn, right there, the corner of the, the camera you see, and be able to hang these up. So it, it's like kind of putting them out of sight and out of mind until I need them. Getting them off the ground, they're poplar, so if they lay on the ground they could uh, uh, deteriorate faster. Obviously I could come back and treat them with something, some oil or some finish. But if I can keep them high and dry for most of the time that I need them, when I'm not using them, then they'll last a long, long time. Again, the thought is to be able to move these around anywhere. If I want to go down to the other barn and do some sorting, or if I want to help navigate pigs from one pasture to the other uh, cleaner, then can set these up as temporary alleyways. The plan would be to get to where I have, you know, 10, 20, a whole bunch of these things. I don't know how many Jordan has, but my goodness, when you see his videos, he's got at least 20 or 30, just, just in an area where he's doing some temporary corralling. So we got plenty of material, so the material's free. It's just the mill, time, the gas, and then the screws that I needed to put it together. Meredith's over there sulking. She's really been upset this week that she's been separated from her friends. She's been wanting to hang out with them. She even comes over and has made a bed right here at night. She'll lay right against the barn. And because the three of them have been sleeping cozily together in the barn for, for months. So she's, uh, she's definitely ticked. I just don't trust her around the piglets. Um, she's, she's had some bad experiences in her last couple of farrowings and without being an actual mama being around, it's just, it's just not a good idea. You don't want a 900 pound pig lump, lumbering around even if she has the best intentions. So what's left to do? Well, yeah, other than the cosmetic stuff, the sliding door and figuring out how I wanna close in that eave. As far as farrowing goes, <clears throat> I'm debating whether or not it's going ahead and building a creep area, you know, an area that the, the piglets can escape to. They're drawn to by heat to get away from the mamas from laying on them, that type of thing. We're really not into the cold, cold nights. I mean, we've been in the 50s, so I don't know if that's going to be enough to pull them away. So it may not function the way it's supposed to right now, unless yeah, as if we were farrowing in colder months. It's something I'm going to need eventually and should do it anyway. So probably going to remove this board here and just make a triangular creep area in this center, back center of the wall. So if a pig happens to farrow here or here, I think they're both gonna farrow close together. They, they aren't showing any signs of aggression to one another. Their due date is, is uh, 48 hours and from now. They're not showing any aggression towards one another. In fact, they're kind of piling up on one another. So I'm debating whether or not uh, to try to fight that and try to get them separated or just let it go. You know, the balance on one hand of stressing them out by having them separated when they want to lay together. Or the concern of two large pigs with a bunch of piglets running around. Again, we'll just see how it goes. But a creep area here would allow piglets to come from both sides. So if one would happen to come over here and nest that very night and the other one's here, then the singular creep area will work. We'll run uh, power through the ceiling with a drop down and we'll super secure heat lights. And the other feature um, I, I need to do, again, I've gone back and forth on this quite a bit, is including some rub rails in some of these tight corners, um, places where when the, when the sow lays down, she can't get right up against a wall that would crush a piglet. So it may add some two by fours around in some of these areas. Some of these boards on the edge already make up that because they have the, the pocket underneath them already. But there's some back corners here that I'll, I'll probably add um, even if it's just some triangular boards, we'll add that to give some escape, escape room for the pigs.
Hey, get away from my screws. And away from the tripod too. Go on. It's Destructo pins. So nothing overly fancy here. What we have now is a triangle for the piglets to come hang out. They can get at it from any side. The sows will not be able to get in there. Um, when they go to lay down, they'll just lay down right against this board so they can't lay down on it. And then I can hang a heat light right down here in that back corner. Obviously keeping away from getting the wood too hot and the sows won't have access to that. So another thing that'll be beneficial when the um, piglets are up and moving around and a couple weeks old, all that stuff, and they're still nursing, but we're introducing them to, to feed, then instead of using that area there as a creep feeder, and I can actually close off this whole area. So I'll just come in and put a, a door, swinging door here, that's only a certain height. Uh, too low for the mamas to go under, but obviously high enough that the piglets can just cruise on in there. We'll put that divider board back in and that will give them um, this whole area to hang out to be kids. I don't have to worry about mama coming in and eating their feed and doing that kind of stuff and it'll introduce them to uh, free feed choice sooner instead of just trying to fight mama for it out of the bowl. So my nearest electrical outlet is down there at the workshop. You can actually see my fence charger. So that's where my closest plug is. And that's about 100 feet, a little, little more. So I've got a couple extension cords and we'll have to be careful, of course. They're heavy. I use my heavy gauge extension cords. We'll run those up and I'll actually have to string them to the tree because old sourpuss over there loves to chew up stuff. She just chewed through one of my garden hoses. Um, so we'll string that through the trees higher than pig height and then uh, of course come in through the eave up here and drop down for our electricity. Again, uh, it may be a fool's errand putting a heat light in because we're just not getting cold enough at night to, to justify that. But new board pig, you're wet, you want to go looking for heat, do you go to mom or do you go to the nice heat light? We'll, we'll try it anyway. Well, if everything goes the way we hope it will, our next video will be Guilt watch, we'll be watching for farrowing, we'll detail that, and of course detail how uh, successful our efforts were with these young gilts farrowing here in our barn. Alright, take care everybody.